On January 1st, Josh's Facebook post of him showing off his deep fried steak on December 31st, 2021, was taken and posted on the popular subreddit r shitty food porn. The post received over 3,000 upvotes and 200 comments comparing Josh's steak to a freshly squeezed human turd. Surprisingly, this wasn't Josh's first turd rodeo. Back in July 15th, 2012, Josh posted a picture of a huge shit he took at the Casper Library and told the trolls to eat this snack he specially prepared for them. On January 2nd, Josh took a brief break from YouTube and posted on Facebook that he had an ear infection and was treating his ailment with z a sleep aid. That same day, during a very long, non-live gender relations video response that nobody watched, Josh said that he was taking a break from live streaming so that he could focus more on pre-recorded videos. I'm taking a break from going live and just doing videos like this. That way I can focus on the video and not have to worry about chat. This turned out to be a lie. Josh's video output had slowed down because he couldn't figure out how to go live on his new Apple iMac that he'd received on December 17th. On January 3rd, Josh said that he was gifted Domino's gift vouchers for Christmas. I got some Domino's gift cards for Christmas. I'm definitely spending them a year, buddy. Which explained him being able to buy two pizzas, one on the first. Did you do you want a slice? No, I'm not ready yet. Okay. But thank you, Robbie. Mm-hmm. And one on the third. You're missing out, because this pizza be popping. That was good pizza, YouTube. Mm -hmm. At 8.42pm, almost a day after saying he'd be taking a break from live streaming, Josh attempted numerous times to go live with a video called Chillin' and was unsuccessful. On January 4th, Josh most likely low on funds, posted a Facebook link to a King Cobra hat that he had designed on his customised girl storefront. That same day, Josh posted pictures of his family holiday to Florida that he did not attend. Josh's dad Clint was quick to comment that Josh is always invited to family gatherings, but declines due to stress and anxiety. On January 5th, Josh posted on Facebook that he was going to be making a cooking video with pork ribs. Josh got into the trend of ordering groceries using DoorDash, and cooking videos with ribs became a regular feature on Josh's channel from here on out. At around 10pm, Stephanie, Josh's ex-girlfriend, posted a reaction video to Josh's video reacting to her video reacting to his cooking. It's obvious that Stephanie's still horny for this con. Nope, I don't want a bacterial infection, thank you. You're salty my ass. Why you salty boy? You're such a clout whore. Oh, there's another one. Shortly after the video was posted, Josh saw the video and made a comment calling Stephanie a liar. He then went to Facebook and made a post saying that Stephanie was copying his channel and that she was clout chasing. Josh then commented further and pondered the possibility of Stephanie's workplace getting wind of her bullying an autistic online. Josh deleted his comment about an hour later after someone said it was a bad look. Josh quickly moved on and then gave an update on why he hadn't been streaming by saying that the web browser he was using, Safari, did not support webcam streaming on YouTube. Later on that night, Josh listed two lathed ones on Etsy for $48 each. At almost 3am, Josh posted again on Facebook and saw that people were posting his Facebook status updates onto the King Cobra JFS subreddit. The next day, Josh called Stephanie a cunt when replying to someone in the thread, and then of course deleted the comment afterwards. Josh then said that he's not taking the bait and will not be making a video response. He also deleted these comments. Later on that night, Josh finally fixed his issue with live streaming on his Mac by switching to Google Chrome. In the livestream called Unboxing, Josh spoke briefly about Stephanie and called her a cunt again. What's the Stephanie stuff about? Just ignore it, dude. She's being a clout chasing cunt. She's jealous that I'm more famous than her on YouTube. And she still misses me, so, you know, she's gonna talk shit and spread lies. She uses her insecurities and shyness to manipulate people, and it's kind of sad, to be honest. And also showed off a katana that he'd purchased for a friend's birthday. This is a birthday gift, and I'm not going to say who it's for, because that's none of your business. And just like that, I want to pull it out and take a look at it. Oh, 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 YouTube. The katana was a cheap, chinois purple empress short samurai sword. 
he'd purchased for $177 and some odd cents, plus shipping from BudK.com. So I bought a uh, samurai sword from BudKKnives.com. They're not a sponsor. Oh, check that out, YouTube. That is fucking sweet. This is a return form. <laughs> We're not going to need that. Josh refused to say who the sword was for, but it was speculated that this was for his friend Darth Lenny B, as his favourite colour is purple and his birthday is in early February. But... Most fans assume that this sword was for Josh's crush, Alan, who's Alan, due to his vagueness and her birthday was also on January 9th. On January 9th, well-known cheeky boy museum privilege asked Josh about the sword, but Josh quickly grew tired of museum's cheeky line of questioning. Oh yeah, so did you give the sword to your friend? Uh, yeah, they really, they like it. How did they like it? They said they just, they, they like it, it's cool looking. Oh, nice. Did you go to a party or? Mm, not really, no. Did they come over to your house or? No, over to some associates of theirs. I just gave it to them there. Oh, so you didn't even get to see them open it up? No, but that's all right. As long as they like it. It's, it's... Will you see your friend with the sword soon, buddy? I so I don't know. Oh, okay. Rewind back to January 6th. Josh went live again with a five hour stream called Addressing the Issue and mentioned Stephanie again. This time, he believed that the trolls were controlling Stephanie and telling her what to say and had a screenshot proving it. And I, I don't like bringing up Stephanie, but the trolls are manipulating Stephanie to start drama between us on YouTube because they're sad, miserable fucks. I'm not gonna bother watching her stupid video or responding to it because that's exactly what the trolls want. On January 8th, around 3 p.m., Josh posted on Facebook that he believed his trolls were paying Stephanie to make videos about him. At almost 7 p.m. that same day, Stephanie wrote on YouTube that she wasn't being paid by Josh's trolls and didn't even have a Facebook account. Josh then made a video called F the Drama and said that he wasn't stupid and now doesn't think Stephanie was paid by the trolls after all. So, I'm aware of the fact that my ex is not being paid by my trolls. I'm not stupid, you know. But my trolls are trying to manipulate and start drama between me and one of my exes, and it's really dumb. And of course I'm not going to pay Stephanie $3,400 to harass me on the internet. That's dumb. My trolls are pathetic. Josh believed that the trolls were trying to harm Josh's reputation and were controlling Stephanie to say bad things about him. Josh also went back and deleted his Facebook post talking about his trolls paying Stephanie. At 9pm, it was discovered that Josh replied to a post by Ellen's mother wishing her a happy birthday. Josh called Ellen a badass young woman. On January 10th, Josh officially ended the feud with Stephanie and said that he won't be replying to her videos or ever talking about her on a live stream ever again. That's because Stephanie was being a bitch. She started attacking me out of fucking nowhere, critiquing and criticizing the way my apartment looks, the way my food looks, and I never once made a video talking shit about her as far as her videos go. Like I said, you don't call a woman a bitch unless she's being one. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about Stephanie on my channel, dude. We're not here to talk about that. She's being a clout-chasing cunt, and we're going to ignore her like we ignore my trolls. Sadly, after receiving money from fans, Josh went back to his pattern of disabling live chat in his live streams, and also went back to reacting to videos like Terrence Pop and Sydney fucking Watson. On January 11th, Josh got word that he was somewhat famous on TikTok, after his fans slash trolls took clips of his videos. Josh said that if any of these users didn't share any of the money they were making, he would be taking legal action against them. I'm somewhat of a celebrity on YouTube, but you know, people have definitely heard of me. I'm blowing up on TikTok right now because someone else takes my videos and clips them into shorter clips and uploads it to TikTok. 
Like, look, if you want to steal my content and upload it to TikTok, cool. You're helping me get more exposure. But if you start making money off of TikTok videos, you know what I'm saying? The least you could do is, like, split it with me, you know? Take that TikTok money and dump it into my PayPal. Because if you don't, you know, then we're going to have problems. If you don't share the money with me that you potentially may make off of TikTok, I will be hiring lawyers. You either share the money you make off of TikTok 50-50, or I send you a cease and desist. And I sue your ass for fucking, what's it called? Uh, impersonation? I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of, like, legal shit, being as I'm autistic. They could fucking... Yeah. On January 13th, Josh somehow got even lazier with his ones by using the same image for three ones he sold for $48 each. As expected, they sold out instantly. On January 14th, Josh went to Ellen's mother Angie's house during a live stream, but the trolls found Angie's phone number online and began posting it in chat. Trolls then began calling Angie's home phone to troll Josh. You're so obsessed with harassing me, you're gonna find out Angie and Walt's fucking number just to fuck with them. My buddies Angie and Walt, they agree with me, man. They laugh at the trolls. Yeah, right there, this is just like Frosty's all over again. Oops, I hit the hang up number. <laughs> because they're. They called my cell phone. Oh shit. No, you cannot. Put a fucking goddamn call on my phone. This is Angie. Enough. I've been pretty chill about this whole troll thing and not like pressing charges or anything, but you keep gang stalking me and it's gonna go down. Harder than your mom on my dick, I'll tell you what. You do realize that I have fans in the Casper Police Department. We're chilling like rock star villains. I'll catch you cool cobras later. After this event, Josh learnt from his mistakes and didn't record or do live streams at Angie's house. Also, a troll went a little bit too far and began harassing Angie on Facebook. On January 19th, one of Josh's fans and content creators, Richie Wright, had a friend named Mr. Lantern who was involved in some drama. Mr. Lantern is a mentally handicapped person and also a YouTube creator. Whilst in a Discord server owned by Tootle Rob, a fan of Josh, Cool Taste, and Richie Wright, Mr. Lantern tried to search for child pornography using a porn bot on Discord. Lantern was called out and changed his Discord name a few times to try and avoid getting caught. Richie ended up leaving Tootle Rob's server after refusing to address the situation. A YouTuber called Bill Berge created a video called Mr. Lantern Revealed where he showed screenshots of Mr. Lantern attempting to search for child pornography using a Discord porn bot. Later on that night, Richie stupidly defended Mr. Lantern and said that he wasn't a child groomer. Richie went live and refused to talk about Mr. Lantern. Exhumed Visions, go to exhumedvisions.com, buy some sweet merch, tried to get Richie's attention by demodding himself and unsubscribing from Richie's channel. Richie was more concerned about losing people in his server than Mr. Lantern being a chimo. Richie ended up banning Mr. Lantern from his Discord server, but it was a little too late. Later on, Richie joined Courtney's stream and was giving a good talking to and said that he'd banned Lantern and would not be associating with him anymore. So, yeah, I mean, I heard about what, uh, what was going on with Lantern and I seen that, you know, and I, you know, with, you know, I think it's wrong. Dude. Well, for now, he, he for now, he, he's blocked and I blocked him on my server, out of my server. So, OK, so that's a clear. OK. OK. So let me say it again. Lantern is blocked out of my server. Okay. In my server. Even Josh joined Courtney's live stream and was very mad at Lantern and even called him a chimo. Josh even went a step further and posted on his YouTube community page for the very first time, 
to say Mr. Lantern was a sicko and fuck pedophiles. The next day on January 20th, Josh made a video condemning Mr. Lantern and hoped that Richie wasn't a chimer himself and even unsubscribed from Richie's channel. I got something to say. Fuck Mr. Lantern. You sick, fucking nasty, fat, balding fuck. People are like, but he's got the mind of a five-year-old. I don't care. That's no excuse, man. No, I've unsubscribed from Richie Wright's channel. It's not good PR for your channel, Richie. I seriously hope Richie isn't. You know what I'm saying? Because if he is, pff, dude, no. I saw the stream that Courtney did with Richie. This is not one of those things where you can just say it's just his autism. Like, fuck off, Richie. I saw that. Now, I've ignored Richie Wright talking shit on his channel saying, oh, yeah, Cobra's been drinking and he's an alcoholic and this and that. I got the subs, bro. You don't. And if you want more subscribers and you care about your fans, you need to ditch that land and fuck, dude. Richie, for some ungodly reason, unblocked Mr. Lantern and had him on his live stream again. Richie's fans were furious, and some even began posting nudes of Richie in his own Discord. To make this story a little bit more fucked up, a video emerged of Mr. Lantern getting blown and jerked off by his stepsister, and this video was posted in many Discords associated with Josh and Richie. On January 27th, Richie got mad and went back onto Courtney's stream again and said that Mr. Lantern was blocked for good. Or not. Because Richie invited Mr. Lantern back onto his live stream panel on February 12th. What's up? What's up, Richie? Everybody voting blood for the come on panel, huh? Yeah. Everybody, you know, I've seen that's everybody was saying too. Everybody was saying bring Lantern. It's like, uh -huh. yeah. During the live stream, Richie was informed that Lantern was looking up child pornography whilst on stream with Richie. Lantern, are you doing that stuff in Discord again? No. About, about looking kids up? Mm -mm. Are you? Mm -mm. Be honest. Mm -mm. Yes or no? Yep. You are? Why? I don't know why. It came up. Well, guess what? What? I'm going to have to kick you off then. Uh -huh. Not supposed to, you shouldn't be doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that stuff, Lantern? I don't know. Lantern? And yeah, didn't know what we're thinking. No, Lantern just said he wasn't doing. It. Oh, all right. Well, we'll let it, we'll let it go, but but you know you know that's wrong. Yeah. Typing that stuff, you can't be typing that stuff. In okay. Server. All right. All right. That's why that's why everybody's going after you. You got it. Yeah. After the live stream, Richie went back onto Courtney's stream again, and it turns out that Richie had unblocked Mr. Lantern because Richie did a poll on his Discord server, and people voted in favour of having Mr. Lantern back onto Richie's live stream. Let's get this Lantern thing settled first. So, all right, so everybody, um, every, see, a lot of people were commenting on my video saying, "Bring Lantern back! Bring Lantern back! Bring Lantern back!" Every a lot, a lot of people were saying. And I put a poll in my Discord server, and a lot of people said, yeah, you know, bring him back. Richie eventually blocked Mr. Lantern completely and didn't have him back on his channel ever again. But sadly, Richie should have learned from the first time, and many fans began unsubscribing and didn't really watch Richie anymore. And sadly for Richie, Josh unsubscribed and demodded Richie from his YouTube channel. I don't want any drama with Richie, right? But, uh, if, dude, everyone's warning you, dude, stay away from Mr. Lantern, and would you listen? No. On January 20th, Josh made a new Shoot Your Local Pedo shirt on his customized girl storefront. Josh was up until 3am painstakingly customizing a copyright image he'd stolen from Google Images. The next day on the 21st, a troll reported the shirt to Customize Girl support team and it got removed. Josh went live and said that the image was copyright free, but still got taken down. I'm going to have to redo my uh, Shoot Your Local Sick Fox t-shirt that I did on Customize Girl. So if the fans could design me a sweet looking skull holding two six shooters or a double barrel side by side that I can use for the t-shirts, I'll give you a shout out in the video. 
I like the concept of that shoot your local pedos. That's fucking hilarious shit. On January 20th, Josh began obsessing about making hard-boiled eggs during his nine-hour gaming stream. Josh's trend of ordering alcohol and groceries from DoorDash and paying extra for delivery fees continued. Kind of in the mood for some hard-boiled eggs. Got me some Doritos to snack on. And I got me some eggs. That's the last of my PayPal money. Appreciate it. The next day on the 21st, Josh boiled 12 eggs for over an hour and ate them all as a challenge for $50. I want to make some hard boiled eggs. It really isn't rocket science to make hard boiled eggs. No, I haven't failed yet. We got one more unwrapped and one more to eat. Hard boiled egg challenge 12, one dozen eggs, hard boiled. The next day on the 22nd, Josh deep fried hard boiled eggs for the first time in a cooking video. Should we try one on YouTube? I think we should. Mm. Not bad. Not bad at all. Fast forward to February 11th, Josh ate a bunch of hard boiled eggs during Cool Taste livestream. What do, you, what do you got there, Josh? Some hard boiled eggs. That's my dinner. Hard boiled show. eggs? Nice, nice. Oh, hell yeah. Mm. Hey, Gilbert, can I give you a Spanish lesson? It's not Tapatillo, it's Tapatillo. Hey, cool taste, how dare you fucking correct him? You sorry piece of shit. I just want to know. You're the I one that spells color, C-O-L-A-R, you fucking don't. Shut up. On February 20th, Josh spiced things up by boiling eggs in Mountain Dew and hot sauce for a disgusting cooking video. Check them out. Let's see how I do. Salty and sweet. On January 24th, Josh showed off his new black and green pipe he purchased from TobaccoPipes.com for a little over $100 on Facebook. Even Josh's dad Clint was very impressed with Josh's new pipe. On January 25th, Josh's dad Clint purchased a brand new phone and graciously gave Josh his old one. Josh's fans celebrated because Josh's microphone on his old phone was broken and would cut in and out, ruining all of Josh's phone videos. I got a new device for recording cooking videos, so hopefully the audio don't cut in and out. On January 25th, Josh uploaded more merchandise to his customized girl storefront. On January 25th, Josh attempted to stream a tactical soap commercial similar to the other two tactical soap commercials he's done before. Add some magic to your life. I mean, I got a nice cock, but that doesn't mean nobody wants to see it now. Come on. <laughs> yes. What the hell is tactical soap? Only the greatest soap on the planet, Squidward. While in the shower, Josh's phone froze, Josh got mad, deleted the video, and then made a Facebook post afterwards. Trolls began making fun of Josh's livestream freezing. Josh went on Facebook and said that he owns the trolls and he's living rent free in their heads. Not gonna lie, I was a little pissed off when the uh, stream cut out. But what do you do? That's life. I bitched about it and I got over it. Mmm, yes, eucalyptus and mint. Around midnight, Josh sold four ones on Etsy for $48 each and posted the link on Facebook. Josh accidentally listed a wand he was making for himself for his personal collection, but just decided to sell it instead after it sold out instantly. Around January 28th, Josh created a new shirt in an attempt to profit from the trolls making fun of him by calling him a Boglim. This was a nickname given to Josh originally by Cool Taste in late 2020 and adopted by Josh's trolls. Josh, however, spelled the word incorrectly with a U to say Boglum but would then later claim that he spelled the word incorrectly to quote-unquote piss off the trolls. On January 31st, during a live stream, Josh edited the shirt to the correct spelling of Boglim. It's funny to spell Boglim wrong, but it'd be even funnier if I took the U out and added the I, because I'm weaponizing what the trolls are doing to me and then just turning it against them. So yeah, I took the U out of Boglum and made it Boglim, like it fucking matters. Fucking cool taste. I meant to say goblin and 
and they came out Boglum or whatever. It's just some fucking stupid internet meme. That same day, Josh was featured on the popular YouTube channel Unusual Videos, which had 3.2 million subscribers. Oh, dude. All I can do is pour a cup of Monster and calm the fuck down. I'll try, but no guarantee. The video of Josh featured was a clip from the Facebook livestream posted on May 22nd, 2018. This was also the same livestream where trolls sent Josh a customized Lay's chips from Danny Devine. It's not a custom bag, it's just a regular bag of chips. Hey, hmm. It says on the back, D Devine. Right Hope this bag puts a smile on your face. D Devine. Danny Devine. <laughs> There's no way Danny Devine sent this. This is probably sent by some fan. That same day, Josh tried to do a video reaction of a channel called The Path of Fire, a transgender sword and knife blacksmith. Josh's trolls flooded her chat with references to Josh and called him a chimo, and managed to get Josh banned from a channel after he tried to defend himself in the live chat. This is a uh, YouTuber by the name of The Path of Fire. Are you at age? I am almost 36 years old. Dude, don't be making comments about your titties. That's inappropriate, guys. Come on. If you if you want to say stupid ass shit, go for it. But it's just like you'll never see me on any platform ever again. So I hope your stupid comment is worth it. I am not a fucking sicko, dude. I fucking hate sick fucks. Dude, fuck you all, okay? You've been placed in timeout by the owner of this video or a moderator. Dude, piss off. I hate child molesters. I have no control over my trolls. Also on January 31st, Josh uploaded two new shirts to his customized girl storefront. Josh ended the month by changing his profile picture on Facebook. On February 3rd, a fan found Josh featured in a video from 2020 by Orton Shea Films, a large YouTube channel with over 200,000 subscribers. The video used was the popular fun size Felicia sex doll unboxing video called Sean and Saunders Unboxing Video from early 2017. Give her a kiss. Uh, yeah, come on, give me a kiss, big boy. Uh, Ooh, you're making me wet. <laughs> hey, what's up? Natoon Shay, sir. It is time to make another episode of Checkmate Lincolnites, a wildly unpopular internet show. On February 4th, a troll paid for a custom cameo shout out from Danny Filth, the lead singer of Josh's favorite band, Cradle of Filth. Greetings, Josh, Aka Gothic King Cobra. Um, this is Danny from Cradle of Filth and your cameo was requested by Courtney, who wants me to remind you to brush your teeth and also to bathe this year. <laughs> At least once this year, if possible. Um, is that good, boy? Thanks ever so much for being a massive fan of Cradle of Filth, and thank you very much for receiving this hideous cameo message from me. And you can thank caught me for that. Anyway, take care, have a great time, and thanks once again for supporting me and Cradle of Filth. You rock. <clears throat> a few hours later, after Josh was sent the video, Josh posted the video to his Facebook and was excited that he got a shout out from his idol, Danny Filth, even though the video was made to make fun of him. Josh's dad Clint and his sister Tiana even liked Josh's post on Facebook. Afterwards, Josh would then upload a video with his neighbour, Down the Hill Dave, thanking Danny Phil for giving him a shout out. YouTube, first of all, I want to give a major thank you to uh, Danny Phil from Cradle of Phil. Thank you for the shout out. Even though one of my trolls pretended to be Courtney Newitt from the Courtney Sucks Discord to try to troll me, it didn't work, dude. I think it's awesome. Thank you for the shout out, Danny Phil. Much obliged. I own the trolls, dude. <laughs> <laughs> On February 5th, Josh uploaded three new shirts to his customized girl storefront. On February 11th, the trolls weren't done and paid for another cameo shout out for Josh from Danny Filth. This time, they mentioned a certain warlord. Greetings, Alex. Alex Warlord Campbell. This is Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth. How the devil are you, my friend? This is a cameo video request 
from Cobra. Apparently, he's your partner. And I'm to tell you that he's very, very sorry for breaking your phone and that he loves you very much. And apparently, <laughs> this sounds uh, slightly pervy, you have incredible smooth muscle control. Don't want to hear about it. I really don't. Anywho, young man, this is from your f partner, Cobra. Um, sorry for breaking your phone and all that. And I guess he loves you very much. So, Alex, have a great day. Stay safe during these COVID-ridden times. And above all, young man, above all else, stay filthy. Your fiend, Danny Filth. Over and out. That same day, Josh started a live stream and began laughing hysterically and spoke about the new cameo shout out from Danny Filth. <laughs> so, someone paid Danny Filth to do another cameo pretending to be me, and it's hilarious. You guys gotta hear this shit. <laughs> now, I'm straight for of age women. And that he loves you very much. It's not like that, dude. I do feel bad about breaking Campbell's phone, but that's as far as it goes. <laughs> Shit. Hey, man, thanks for supporting one of my idols, Danny Filth, and giving me a good laugh, man. That was funny shit. On February 13th, around midnight Casper time, Josh listed his pie-high hat for $3,400 on Etsy. Josh removed the listing after a few minutes. On February 14th, funny enough, Valentine's Day, Alex Warlord Campbell came over and apologised to Josh at his apartment. Josh accepted the apology and gave him another chance, and also gifted him his old iPhone. Josh said that Alex told him that he had cancer and had four years to live. Alex also said that his son was taken away by the Wyoming Department of Family Services. Josh was instantly sceptical about Alex having cancer. Appreciate Alex Campbell coming over and apologising. I gave him my old phone. I'm tired of drama. And if he's willing to get his shit together, then okay. The fact that he came over and apologized, I can respect that. Alex Campbell told me he had cancer and he's allegedly only got four years to live. I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, that sucks, dude. I don't know if he's making that up just for attention or if he's being sincere. But yeah, Alex came over and talked to me about his problems, and I don't know how much of it's real and how much of it is just a ploy for attention. I don't want drama in my life, so I actually appreciate Campbell, who now goes by Wolf Lord Campbell. I appreciate him apologizing. He's no longer a warlord, apparently. That same day, Josh uploaded three new t-shirts to his customized girl storefront. On February 15th, Alex was asked on Facebook Messenger if he had cancer. Alex said that he thought he had cancer, not that he did have cancer. Either Alex was lying, or Josh must have misheard Alex, as he had been drinking all day. On February 20th, Josh sold a single layered wand on Etsy for $48. At 3am on February 21st, Josh uploaded a newly edited photo of himself reminiscent of the early Facebook days. At 8.30am, he made this his new Facebook profile picture. In the early hours of the morning on February 21st, Josh created even more merch for his customized girl storefront. Throughout the month, Josh's upload schedule changed and he began posting less while he was working on his new album titled Satan's Bell, which he'd been working on since September 2021. Josh also got into the habit of posting short multi-part cooking videos, perhaps either due to him forgetting to charge his phone, or he was self-conscious of making mistakes. Fans felt disappointed with Josh's new direction, and felt it wasn't the same as his older, more beloved cooking video style. On February 26th, during a live stream by Courtney, Josh was introduced to another YouTuber named Gothy. Yo, I Yo. Oh, I'm hugged. I'm hugged. Oh god. Fucking <laughs> cat got me. Girl. Shit. Hi, gorgeous. Hi. What's going on? I'm gonna. I'm gonna Are you a fan of Cobes, King Cobra? There we go. Um, newly, yeah. All right, well, Josh. Do you want to look at her butt really quick? I mean, I was checking her out even before you did that. <laughs> <laughs> mask smoking. Hey, hi, hi. How you doing? 
Do you talk to I'm women? Okay. At all? Hi. So what's I'm going on? What the fuck? What's true? What's what's real? What's I, I hear that, dude. Like shit. Who's a fan? Who's a troll? Who's just fucking with you? I feel that. You can put this in anytime. Anything you want to. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't say that. Um Throughout the month of March, Josh's content took a significant change in the form of joke videos. Ever since the end of last year, Josh dedicated a lot of his time watching stand-up comedians and thought his audience wanted to hear his own jokes. Josh's joke videos were typically around 10 seconds long and were considered juvenile by the majority of Josh's fans. This type of content was considered by many as non-tent. Many of Josh's fans began to get frustrated after getting a notification from YouTube saying that Josh posted a new video, only for it to be a 10 second joke video. For the month of March, Josh uploaded a total of 96 times. 42 of these videos were joke videos, roughly between 5 and 20 second long. That's 43% of Josh's videos being joke videos. And to make things worse, only 19 of these videos were live streams, and 12 of them were video responses. On March 1st, Josh changed his iconic YouTube profile picture to an image of a cobra. Josh has used this image of a cobra on different occasions, such as Patreon and on Customized Girl. This change was significant because the last time Josh changed his YouTube profile picture was in 2018. On March 1st, until the early mornings of March 2nd, Mountain Time, Josh spent the evening on a phone call with Gothy. Gothy went live with a stream called Nobody Wands Me. I'm Damaged Goods. In the live stream, Gothy was very upset with Josh and said that he was uninterested and yawned when she was talking about her hard life. No one wants your mommy. It's fine. Cobra's contact? There. Are you fucking happy? Are you fucking proud of yourself? And yeah, I am fucking damaged goods. If you were asked and you fucking want me, you clearly fucking don't. You sat there and said, no, no, that wasn't the case. That was the fucking case. I am exactly what that fucking boy wants and needs. Apparently it's fucking not good enough. Whilst Gothy was live, Josh made a video called To Gothy, You're Not Damaged Goods. I don't know what the fuck I did. I was on the phone talking to Gothy over Facebook for like several hours and now she's here on stream saying she's damaged goods uh, and say how nobody wants her I'm like first of all gothy hon you're, you're not damaged goods second of all can I get to know you first am I the bad guy for saying well, let's get to know each other first before we go any further during her stream gothy saw Josh's video and dished the dirt are you fucking serious you can't fucking call me and tell me that yourself. You had to fucking make a video response. What you fucking can't fucking answer goddamn phone? Well, I guess since he's gonna fucking sit here and bring personal fucking business personal, let's get fucking personal, shall we? Let's just say I was entirely accepting of him. That's all I'm gonna say, you guys. I'm sorry, as a whore and sit there staring at dick all fucking damn day i know my sizes sorry bitch i ain't fucking lying that boy's seven and a half inches fully fucking hard i saw it twice and i was gonna fucking tell him tomorrow i want to fuck him he got free fucking access to my fucking only fans too see i told you i called that fucking shit long before i fucking knew her she sits there and fucking plays and manipulates that fucking boy. I fucking told you. I may have fucking dodged a bullet, but so did you. You break my heart. The fucking universe don't fucking like that. I am divinely pr protected by the universe. Don't buy his shit. It's not worth it, guys. You're better off fucking buying his wands than you are his fucking merchandise. Just saying. On March 2nd, Josh was gifted a lighter leash from someone named Dave Cherry. It's uncertain if this is Josh's neighbor down the hill, Dave. I got a lighter leash attached to my spike dog collar, yes. In the same video, Josh watched Gothy's video called It's Public, where she spoke about Josh. Anyway, 
So my fucking response to King Cobra is this. You had a fucking ride or die. When someone sit here, sits here and tells you stories about the fucking crap they've been through, that should fucking sit there and tell you something and click in your fucking little brain. Okay, you know what? I don't have a little brain. Now you're going to insult me? You're going to fucking call me stupid and say I have a tiny brain? Really? Fucking really? Just because you're autistic does not fucking mean that I'm going to sit here and baby you or coddle you. And you know what? Just because you have bipolar fucking personality disorder doesn't mean I'm going to sit here and coddle and baby you. Then you can sit here and want to grow and want to learn. You know what? You don't even know me, Gothy. I have grown and learned as a person. What you honestly fucking do to people. You shouldn't sit there and fucking emotionally rape them. Oh my fucking god! Is this bitch emotionally ra Okay, you're dumb. First of all, emotions cannot fuck you. Emotions cannot fuck you physically, okay? I haven't done shit to you with trying to be your friend and get to know you. I'm sorry, but, you know, and you, you of all people should understand. I'm sick of this shit. You're sick of this shit? You're fucking sick of this shit? You don't even know the half of it, dude. Gets turned down by a fucking weak-ass man like yourself. And you're a sicko. You know what? I ain't no fucking sicko, first of all. Fuck you. And second of all, I didn't turn you down. All I said was, let's take it slow and see where it goes. Am I the fucking bad guy for wanting to play it cool and just, you know what I'm saying? On March 3rd, Josh uploaded 18 new t-shirts to his customized girl storefront and also said that he wasn't going to be talking about Gothy anymore and even claimed that she used to date a pedophile. You know, and when I tried to call back certain people, they won't even answer their phone. They have my number blocked, so you know who you are. I'm not going to say your name because, like I said, <laughs> I'm done talking about you on my channel. <laughs> You made things public when you went on your little fucking pity party live stream like, Oh my god, nobody wants me. <laughs> and you want to call me a fucking sicko, but did you know that Gothy used to date a pedophile? Yikes, dude. She knew about the one conviction and still chose to date his ass. And I'm like, that's gross, dude. Told me herself when we were chit-chatting. I'm like, that's gross, dude. Fucking disgusting. An effort was made to keep up with Gothy, but she would stream 11 hours a day and delete her streams afterwards, making it impossible to document this small saga. On March 9th, Gothy attempted to seduce Richie, but even he grew tired of her manic episodes and cut all communication. You you had her going earlier, Richie, now you're acting all shy. He's fine. He's fine, you guys. Like, my god. I've dealt with worse. He didn't flex him. Now he is. <laughs> <laughs> on March 6th, Reddit user Gothic Piss posted an image of Josh on the subreddit Volunteers for Ukraine with a fake story. The thread received lots of views and comments referencing Josh. Later on that day, Josh posted on Facebook a drink combo and his favourite flavour of Mike and Ike's candy. On March 7th, Josh's Etsy was briefly taken down again, most likely due to a customer refund request or overdue fees. His Etsy was brought back a few hours later. On March 8th, Josh uploaded four new t-shirts to his customized girl storefront. On March 8th, Deathbed Tapes posted the album artwork of Josh's new album, Satan's Bell. On March 9th, Tactical Soap on Instagram shared a fake five-star review with a reference to Josh. On March 14th and 15th, Josh uploaded three new t-shirts to his customized girl storefront. On March 15th, over at the second subreddit, The Boglum, a user created a thread called Casper Meetup in 2022 and said they were planning to drive down to Casper in July and were wondering if others wanted to meet up and see Josh. That same day, Josh was warned about the thread and went live and thought that trolls were planning to come to his hometown in Casper to assault him. But the issue in question involves that stupid fucking subreddit that's dedicated to harassing me. But it got so bad that the haters went and created another subreddit. And they were talking about coming to Casper to meet up with me and all kinds of shit. Some of the comments got deleted by the subreddit mods. Talking about how you're going to jump my ass and shit. Regardless if you're being serious or not, I'm taking it seriously and the authorities are getting involved. So if you want to keep fucking with a 31-year-old autistic, 
then you're gonna end up in federal prison for this shit, dude. Like, I'm done fucking around. In that same stream, Josh said that he was contacted by someone who wanted to help Josh manage his YouTube channel. This quote unquote management company wanted to hire Josh, help him produce higher quality videos, and pay him to do so. I got some cool Cobras who are gonna hire me to uh, do uh, my videos more professionally. Here after a bit, if things go according to plan, I'll be contracted by a management team that's willing to pay me top dollar and keep me financially stable so I can keep doing what I love doing on YouTube and get paid to do it. Seems how YouTube wants to be a cut and take away my monetization. Oh, shit. Josh's fans had a sneaking suspicion that this management company could be Chaz Raz, an internet lol cow named Beefrave who attempted to take over Josh's channel in 2020. It was discovered by Reddit user Jess Jekyll on April 5th that the person behind the management company was named Tom Brennan, manager of Perry Caravello, a YouTuber, streamer, actor and comedian. It is unsure if Josh is still being contacted by Tom Brennan, but Josh has yet to mention the business venture again. On March 17th, Josh showed his stomach and said they had gained weight from drinking beer and eating fast food. And then during a short joke video on the same day, Josh's stomach was more pronounced because his shirt was tucked in. This made users on the King Cobra JFS subreddit create memes and comment on his weight gain. On March 21st, Josh sold a single lathe wand around 3am mountain time for $48. That same day, Josh made seven new t-shirts for his customised girl storefront. On March 22nd, Josh livestreamed a two-part six-hour Sydney Watson video response that started at 1am and ended at 8am Mountain Time. During the second part of the livestream, Josh got a text from his father, Clint, saying that he was $8 into his overdraft. Josh overreacted and was mad at his dad, but quickly cheered up after fans donated to his PayPal to help Josh get out of his financial predicament. Why can't you just text me, hey, hey bud, how's it going? No, it's you can me, baby. How about texting me and saying, oh hey, I'm proud of you, Josh. Keep doing the what you're doing. It's good. You know, when I won the fucking lottery, I built my fucking dream house, money is no longer going to be an issue. I'm not going to get stupid text messages being like, oh, you're a counterman. Oh, what's that? $19.12. Whoever donated that, thank you. Because my account's negative $8. Money is on the way. Okay. You know, like, okay, dude, your son's a YouTube celebrity. It's the, your account's in the negative again. It's just like, thank you for letting me know. I will get it fixed as soon as possible, Father Dearest. On March 20th, Josh launched a birthday fundraiser on Facebook to help raise $200 for the Casper Humane Society. The next day on March 21st, Josh posted a link to an antique church bell for sale on a website and Josh fantasized about purchasing it. Trying to raise $200 for the local Casper Humane Society. I had a friend of mine who did the same thing for her birthday and I wanted to do the same thing myself. I found a website that sells used church bells 50 inch mcshane bell oh yes if i had the money to reinstall the clapper and the wheel and ship it to casper and stick it in my apartment totally would do it likelihood of me having that kind of money not likely but it's fun to imagine right Unless you all buy the uh, the Ring Your Bells t-shirts, I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine how many t-shirts of that would have to be bought before I could afford a church bell this size. I even left these cool cobras a message. I said, hey, my name's Josh Saunders. I'm interested in this particular bell. How much you want for it? 
likelihood of me being able to afford it, not likely, but it's good to get a price range. On March 26th, Josh's 31st birthday, he went live and said that he'd be going to lunch with his family. Josh called his dad to say that he'd be ready for 5pm, but then finished an entire bottle of Pinnacle Cotton Candy Vodka in a timely fashion. Josh ended the stream at 4.55pm, giving him 5 minutes to get ready. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Not a whole lot, just doing a quick live video and I'm gonna take a shower and get ready to go. But yeah, I'll hit you up, I guess around 5. Alright, catch you later. <laughs> Ooh, that still burns. Uh, uh. But, like, uh, yeah, man. I'll catch you later. After the stream ended, a troll did a three way call between Josh and his dad, Clint, and recorded the interaction. Mori. Hey. Josh. What's what up? Doing? What do you what do you got doing my just got doing my live stream on a quick shower and I was gonna give you a call. Josh, you drunk off your ass. No I'm not. Yeah you are, Josh. No I'm not. You can you barely don't drunk You don't know drunk off my ass, dude. Forget it, ma'am. Alright, whatever, bye. Josh then went live and complained about his dad not taking out to lunch on his birthday. Josh said that his dad was jealous of his YouTube fame. I guess I'm not good enough to celebrate my 31st birthday with my dad. My dad showed up to my apartment, said, you're too drunk. And I'm like, really? I'll show you drunk. It's supposed to be on one special day. My dad came up to me and he said, we'll celebrate your birthday tomorrow. And I'm like, personally right now, I'm like, don't even bother. I don't expect my family to worship the ground I walk on. When I show up to my dad and my mom's, I'm just some famous asshole. The only reason my dad didn't take me out, I was too drunk apparently. And then he gave me a huge ass hug, like, I love you, Josh. I'm like, if you loved me, you wouldn't be like, you're too drunk to celebrate. You would have taken me out to celebrate my birthday, but instead it's like, no, you're too drunk. You are a fucking loser. So now my dad's starting to sound like the fucking YouTube trolls that I deal with, and it's pissing me off. My dad thinks I'm an embarrassment to the family, and I drink too much. And I'd rather sit in my apartment and fucking drink myself to death. My freaking dad is intimidated by my YouTube fame. Otherwise, you wouldn't be like, oh my god, you're too drunk. It's the truth, dude. When I was a kid and I started the whole Cobra Demon thing, my dad would talk to me like I was a fucking crazy asshole. Taking me to psychiatrists, like, oh, he thinks he has demonic powers. And now that I'm a famous YouTuber, my cult went somewhere. You know, my dad's starting to sound like all the assholes in Valley City who are like, I love Josh, but Josh and his cobras, you know, kiss my ass, dude. A love for my dad, but at the same time, he just gave me a reason to fucking hate my birthdays even more. All he has to say is, I hate my son. He's a fucking miserable piece of shit. He's more famous than I am, and I hate him, and I'm jealous of his fame. I want to die, but fuck suicide. I'm waiting patiently. Anybody tries to murder my ass, I'll murder them back. We get to that age where life has lost its magic, waiting patiently to die. I know the feeling. The very next day, Josh's parents took him to Craves for his birthday lunch, and all was forgiven. So I went out to dinner with my family. That was nice. I went to Craves. 
got a five piece chicken strip with some garlic cheese curds. And I have a custom sauce I made. Thank you to everyone who wished me a happy birthday. I enjoyed it. On March 29th, for some odd reason, Josh called his trolls pelican fuckers. Yo, my YouTube trolls are a bunch of pelican fuckers. Later on, Josh created a meme and posted it on Facebook of Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. On March 30th, Josh made a video saying that the harp audio used in his song Party in Hell from his new album Satan's Bell after being made aware of theft accusations on the second subreddit. Now, the harp I used in Satan's Bell was recorded from a YouTube video of a woman trying out distortion pedals for her harp. It's not even remotely close to being what they're saying it is on the second subreddit, which is the Boglum. This is my impersonation of my trolls. Because they're retarded. They are the biggest pelican fuckers on the planet, dude. Guess what? The harp is totally safe to use for my music. And the trolls can keep sucking my dick. Later on, Josh organized his fridge to look a lot more professional. To nobody's surprise, Josh's fridge mostly consisted of alcohol and eggs. The next day on March 31st, a user on the King Cobra JFS subreddit made a photoshopped image of Josh and fun size Felicia and made her look like a pelican. A little bit later, Josh saw that the subreddit had taken his joke and made it into a meme and called them unoriginal and desperate. Josh then took the image and put it on a t-shirt on his customized girl storefront to show that he owns the trolls. After the t-shirt was made, Reddit user Baracko Boglum made a sarcastic post about Josh stealing their memes and making t-shirts. Josh then took this sarcastic Reddit post and posted it onto his Facebook profile. Reddit user Michael Beakley then made a sarcastic Reddit post telling Josh to stop reading the subreddit. Josh then took a screenshot of the Reddit post and then put it on a t-shirt and sold it on his customized girl storefront. Around noon Eastern time, Deathbed Tapes posted Josh's new album, Satan's Bell, early on Bandcamp for pre-order. Sadly for Alex, the album was leaked onto YouTube before its official release date by YouTube user Gothic King Mongoose. On April 1st, after 5 minutes, the 20 special edition tapes of Josh's new album sold out. Shortly after, Josh jumped the gun and posted a video called Album Sold Out that he quickly deleted. Josh posted another video clarifying his mistake. So the album is not sold out, I made a mistake on that. There are still 130 tapes left, it is out and available for purchase. Later on, Josh did a long video response to a Terrence Pop livestream. Josh got very drunk and did a very funny dance to a song. Josh also got his name said by Terence Pop reading off a comment. Okay, does uh, Hunter have anything to do with King Cobra, JFS? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Hang on a minute. On April 2nd, Josh hung out with longtime Casper Local and Reddit user Banjo Bill. Yeah, just, just, yeah, try to leave me out. So I don't get... You can bring my name up. You can say, hey, I'm hanging out with Banjo Bill, just don't show my face, just because. Yeah, we're Gucci. What up, Tubes? Just sitting here hanging out with Banjo Bill, having a cigar. These are the, uh, smashing plates with Banjo Bill. On April 3rd, a female harpist named Emily Hopkins posted on the King Cobra JFS subreddit and said she'd made a copyright takedown on Deathbed Tapes Bandcamp for track 6, 
Party in Hell that featured her YouTube video called I Got a Whammy Bar for My Harp, the Bigsby Pedal. I finally did it. I figured out a way to get a whammy bar for my harp. Emily ended up deleting her Reddit post shortly after, possibly due to harassment. On April 3rd, Josh was very annoyed and gave a shout out to Emily and blamed the trolls for telling on him. I want to give a toast to Emily Hopkins. I do apologize, ma'am. I did not realize that, that your videos were copyrighted. She said to Deathbed Tapes that the uh, YouTube version can stay. But the uh, Bandcamp version from now on has to have the harp taken out. It's no big deal. It didn't ruin my entire album. It's still going to be one album. Honestly, my trolls are miserable pieces of shit, and I own their sad bitch ass. I can't control what they do. All I can do is control how I react to it. At 3pm Mountain Time, Josh posted a video ranting about being called a Chimo by the trolls. It could be assumed that these text messages posted on the second subreddit, The Boglum, could be the source of the issue. My trolls are the biggest pieces of shit. Everybody knows I fucking hate pedophiles and sick fucks and all this other shit. And they're doing all this crap because it amuses them. They'll send me a fucking text message accusing me of some shit that, you know what I'm saying? That just makes my trolls look like pedophiles, to be honest. And I think my trolls need help for that, to be honest with you. I've been very public on my channel about how I feel about this issue. And you know what's beyond sad? My trolls do that crap for entertainment. Taking a 31-year-old autistic who hates pedophiles and calling him one just to get a reaction. It's Your life is fucking miserable, dude. Around this time, Josh posted six new t-shirts to his customized girl storefront. On April 7th, Josh did a surprisingly funny joke video. What up, YouTube? So for the past couple of nights, I've had a hard time sleeping. Every time I go to sleep in my bed, I hear growling. Now I think I might have a monster underneath my bed. I'll have to get the wand out, do some like Harry Potter type shit. I don't know, YouTube. Monster, I command you to reveal yourself. <sighs> Oh shit. You too, we should probably check underneath the uh, bed. We we'll have to like throw a vada cadaver or some shit. Hold up a second, you too. Huh. Look at that. There is a monster underneath the bed. That's crazy, man. On April 8th, Josh joined a YouTube livestream panel by a YouTuber named Crystal. Shortly into the livestream, Seizure Robot 5000 joined and interviewed Josh. With help from Seizure, Josh cast a dark spell on me and gave me COVID. Can we get a really big spell tonight? What are you wanting the spell for? Let's pick a troll that you really don't like. Who's number one on the list? Is it Bite Size? Is it Boglum Chronicles? Bite Size can fuck off. Oh, you're not a fan, are you? You don't like him. Fuck Bite Size. Is the yeah. One. Let's craft a spell and we'll, we'll start targeting him, okay? I'll join in. I'll lend you my energy. You know the spirit bomb? I'm sending you my energy right now. Can you feel it? Not really. Yeah, man. If we can get a spell going, let's curse him. Let's curse Bite Size. You have it in you. I know you do. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's coming in. It's coming in. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> On April 12th, Josh made a video tribute to actor and comedian Gilbert Gottfried, who'd passed away that very day. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a really sad day today, man. I'll keep doing my joke videos, just because they're, they're easy to do, they're quick, and they're short, sweet, and to the point. And you know what I'm saying? A little bit of laughter never hurt nobody. My condolences go out to the family of 
Gilbert Gottford. On April 13th, Josh tried to upload an unlisted Sean and Saunders video making fun of Will Smith being a cuck, but accidentally made it public. Do you hear about Will Smith? Show sure did! He's being called a cuck for slapping Chris Rock! Do you believe Will Smith is a cuck? Fuck no! Why do you say that? Because if he was a cuck, he'd be going after Gilbert Gottfried's wife. Hey honey, I know your husband's a little stiff, but so am I. You want to see him? Don't, Sean. What? On April 16th, Josh did a vocal cover live stream and had a big bogey hanging out of his nose. A motherfucker, dude. Oh, fuck. Thank you, you make you defecate. <laughs> Yourself and I will watch you bleed. <laughs> yes! Do it! On April 17th, Josh tried to create a new t-shirt for his customised girl storefront. His t-shirt, Country Girls Make Do, was copyrighted, so he had to change it to Farm Girls Make Do. Later on, Josh received a $40 donation on PayPal and ordered more alcohol from DoorDash. At around 3am Mountain Time, Josh uploaded a new t-shirt to his customised girl storefront. On April 19th, the Grondike Soap Company on Facebook posted another fake review in reference to Josh. On April 20th, Josh, in hopes to make easy money, posted a link on his Facebook to a social earning network scam, similar to another scam he'd fallen for last year, called Swift Bucks. A few hours later, Josh posted a link to his Facebook of a video I edited of him customising a BB gun. On April 21st, Josh posted on Facebook that he'd broken his phone by accidentally spilling liquid on it. I think we can all guess what kind of liquid this was. It was semen. Roughly an hour later, Josh made a video saying that his phone was broken and that he had no way of replacing it. So no more live or cooking videos until I get my phone fixed. After I got done filming my last cooking video segment, my phone quit working. I don't know what the fuck got on it, but I got it in some rice. But my phone's no longer working, so I can't go live on Safari. It doesn't support it on Safari. I try to go live on Chrome with my account. It makes me open up the app on my phone just to make sure it's me and it's verified. You know what I'm saying? So a pain in my Asperger's, dude. Fuck, it is what it is. I don't have enough wand wood neither to make enough wands to pay for a new one. <sighs> if I stole that money from deathbed tapes, I'd probably have an easier time getting one, but it is what it is. To add insult to injury, Josh posted on Facebook that a grain of rice got stuck in his phone's charger port, but his dad, Clint, offered to help fix his phone. On April 22nd, Josh made a video boxing his dummy Sean to be sent to a website called throwthings.com to be upgraded for a $135 fee. Josh purchased an upgrade certificate but ended up losing it before sending off Sean. Well, I'm getting a box ready with a personal thank you note for the fine makers who are going to be working on, working on my dummy Sean. Uh, if I get a couple bucks in my PayPal to ship them off, that'd be great. If not, I'll find a way. Now, I'm hoping the makers at throwthings.com can uh, clean up his face. Because when I was painting Sean up, I got spots of paint all over his face, on the side right here, on the back of his ears. You know, like paint right here. and You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not going to mention who is upgrading him. Just so they don't get harassed. Up close you can see like the paint. Well that fucking sucks dude. That was my last fucking beer. and I cracked it open. Took a couple sips and I'm like let's just do a quick little video. And now uh -huh, there's like that much left in it. Son of a bitch dude. Josh also added that when he attempted to go live on his computer, a security notification would be sent to his phone and he was unable to confirm. 
Josh said that he would either sell his Pi Hi hat for $700 to $800 if he could not repair his phone. I'm not going to ask people for money for a new cell phone because that's ridiculous. I'll try to get the one I have fixed. Worst comes to worst, I will sell my Pi Hi hat on Etsy for like six, seven hundred dollars That's plan B, YouTube. Because right now I can't go live or do live videos or cooking videos until I get my, my fucking cell phone fixed. A few hours later, Josh attempted to garner sympathy and PayPal donations by posting on Facebook that he hated not having a phone. After this post, Josh received some donations from fans and promptly spent some of it on a bottle of Dr. McGillicuddy's intense apple pie schnapps, a bottle of Admiral Nelson's spice rum, and Bud Light. A few hours later, Josh said that he couldn't get a ride to the post office tomorrow and said that he'd probably walk. Josh ended up not shipping Sean because it was snowing in Casper and he had other plans. On April 22nd and the 23rd, Josh joined a YouTube livestream panel of middle-aged jobless cretins with nothing going on in their lives. It is assumed Josh joined the livestream only because he was attracted to the host, a conspiracy theorist, a 40-year-old divorced woman with four kids by the name Madame Mystic Skywatcher. On the 23rd, Josh was harassed by a man named Ugly Hobo. He's a good guy, but then he has to always play the fucking victim mentality, the victim role. No, I do not. And that's I don't bullshit. Yeah, that's baby. bullshit, Josh, and you know it. That's baby, fucking bullshit. Hey, 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 anyways. I can't guys. talk about my problems hey. without being told I'm the Whatever, victim. Josh. Hey. Whatever. Let's get in here, Whatever, dude. Um, anyways. Um, Josh, stop being a fucking, like, chivalrous fucking asshole. A oh, white not shaming, brah. Whatever, to... brah. Trying to fucking. I'm trying to get pussy, Josh. Yeah, You're not. Pussy treating yeah. that shit ain't gonna get you shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. My garbage. Whatever, King Cobra. Whatever, Josh. Cobes cast a spell on him. No, they they already cast a spell on me earlier. He's gonna cast another one. No he more won't. of this shit. No, it's Josh fine. is a bitch. Oh, I will say that. Fucking hit on these chicks and get no. Pussy. Want to call me a champ? That's hypocritical. Whatever, Josh. Shut up, dude. They're saying you need to get laid, Josh. You need to get a life more than I need to get laid. I, I, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> Don't like Mystic. Can you let Josh down softly before this goes off the rails? <laughs> I'm not even. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, be, I'm being nice. Drunk you are being nice. Thank you, Mystic. Naked. Yeah. Josh, would you grow dreads? I said no because I'm not black. Okay, but that's not. What, you don't, what, what the what? fuck? That's racist. Really, what? It's cool, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's racist what? You don't have to be black. Uh oh, there's Leslie now. She's like, what the fuck? I'm not saying anything <laughs> bad about Mystic. No, uh, Cobes is racist. Uh, confirmed. But Mitten. after fighting back and calling the trolls f sharps, Josh admitted defeat and left the stream after being live for 24 hours. You sit there laughing like a fucking retard, like... Whoa, 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 watch it with that R word. Man. And at this... Oh, fuck you, retard, 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 retard. Oh. That's not retard, cool, man. There's people retard, out there. Retard. There's people out there that are... Burgers. Okay, oh my. Just stop hiding behind it, buddy. Retard. That's R word, dude. No, 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 you can't yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, Cobra. I don't Cobra even know what the fucker is. Co I think we've been friends with this fucking fat ass. Whoa, whoa. Chill on that F word, buddy. That's Come not on. cool, man. I thought you were a pro LGBT man. Fucking retard piece of shit. Whoa, man. man. This just went left, man. You've been drinking a little too much, buddy. Well, thing. boys, we're definitely not going to push you tonight. Oh, okay, man. I guarantee you right now. Oh, I can feel you there. <laughs> Everyone's a fucking pussy. That's we are not getting laid tonight. Thanks, Josh, you fucker. Took the, I, I'm not gonna lie. I took the first Moderna vaccine. I came home and my fucking dick's been limp ever since. Then I could have had someone suck it out if it was snake venom at least. You know what I mean? Well, Cobra, you're an expert on that kind of stuff. No, I'm not. <laughs> Just yeah, like I'm, a bigger, I'm a bigger I'm a bigger hobo than you. fucking Josh is. Yeah, you are. I wasn't but, even trying to be a hobo, but dude. I I'm not. I, the thing life. that you're retarded, dude. Let's be honest, man. You're so you? fucking retarded. Get off the internet. Your little bitch ass doesn't scare me. You're Get a bunch of fucking shit, fucking internet. Fat. 
Uh, alcoholic. Hey Josh, you're a sicko. Yeah. You've been alcoholic. watching cute. Sounds like you've been watching cuties. <laughs> oh, oh, what you've been doing, four. dude? For what the fuck you watching cuties? <laughs> yeah. I just brought them up once. You sicko. Yeah, you you're sicko. You're fucking goat. sicko, dude. You're the one hey, who watches cuties. You're, you're such a sicko. What the fuck? Hey Josh, what's wrong with your teeth, buddy? He has perfect teeth, them. troll. Way fucking George Washington has better teeth Would than you Josh. Teeth, teeth are disgusting fine, troll. You're an alcoholic. You're a sicko. You got shitty what? teeth. You're balding. You're a sicko as you because you won't let it go. <laughs> He's five, nine, six foot. Leave him alone. Yeah, you, you got some small feet. Cobra, and I own your fucking... You have corgi life. legs, boy. You don't have to Cobra prove you're a miserable piece of Josh shit. Josh is tall as fuck. Oh, Josh, you're yes. like five, six. <laughs> Cobra, he has corgi legs. Life, Cobra. You say, you say the word fat. And then you don't like black people too from your yeah. earlier. Uh, no, Josh has never fucking said that. You're, you're racist. racist. You're yeah, homophobe. You just got trolled. Now cool taste is the star. The very next day, Josh attempted to seduce a mystic again, but failed and left the panel. I very rarely, rarely get hungover, and I don't even get whiskey dick hardly. <laughs> oh wow! If anything, Jack Daniels just makes me horny. <laughs> So save it for the ladies. Save yeah. it for the ladies. Save those balls for the ladies, Cobra. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tails. Yeah. Oh, I guess oh, Cobra. What happened? Who does? Oh, Cobra left. Cobra oh, left. Cobra left. Yeah. You did that. He seemed very quiet, though, didn't he? That you did that. Okay. On April twenty fifth, Josh made a new T-shirt on his customized girl storefront. Later on that night, Josh posted on Facebook that he'd need to raise $770 in the next two months to pay an undisclosed bill. The bill in question ended up being a $770 lease renewal for his apartment. It can also be assumed that Josh's rent was increased from $690 from last year to $750 or more this year. This is just a speculation, but it seems like Josh's new landlord is trying to force poorer residents out of the property by raising the rent so that they would have no choice but to pay more rent or move. Josh was also told that he could rent his apartment month to month, but it would cost him over $1,000, which he could not afford. It is believed that Josh gets roughly $800 a month from his SSI, which just about covers his rent. Just as an aside, Wyoming's eviction laws are pretty harsh. If your rent is past due, you are giving three days to pay or face eviction. Josh then listed his pie high hat on Etsy for $834. Josh then posted on YouTube saying that he was selling his hat on Etsy. Josh made $30 from customized guild t-shirt sales and said this would be going towards his bill. Two hours later, Josh dropped the price of his pie high hat to $780 in hopes that a fan would buy the hat sooner. In the morning, Josh made a video and said that his hat would come with four wands. Josh then made a video proving that he was making the wands. At 12.30 mountain time, Josh lowered the asking price of his pie high hat to $700. At around 4pm mountain time, Josh ended up dropping the price of his pie high hat again to $500. At 4.50pm Mountain Time, Josh enlisted his pie high hat on Etsy and posted the following on Facebook saying that he wasn't selling his hat anymore. Josh then posted a video on YouTube saying that he wasn't selling his pie high hat but he was selling his wands. But Josh's lathe suddenly broke after carving three wands. Ain't no one wanted to buy the pie high hats for the price I was asking, so I'll just stick to making wands. But there's a problem with that. One of the pieces is stuck. Great. Hey, one thing is another thing, dude. <sighs> I got like three wands made. Josh finished the day by making a video and posted on Facebook asking people to subscribe to his Patreon. Josh's Patreon has two membership levels, a $6 and a $20 tier. Josh only posts two short videos a month to his Patreon. Sudden interest in his Patreon spiked him from 5 patrons to over 20 in a matter of days, netting Josh $200 a month before tax. On the downside of Josh's sudden Patreon success, Josh began posting short videos under a minute long giving all of his new Patreon subscribers a shout out. These new short shout out videos combined with the joke videos made Josh's content output very frustrating for his fans. 
On April 27th, Josh posted more merch for his of age fangirls to his customised girl storefront. Later on that night, Josh listed three layered ones for sale on his Etsy for $48 each, and they all sold out very quickly. On April 28th, Josh made another shirt for his customised girl storefront. In the early morning of April 30th, Josh posted a link on his Facebook to a subreddit post of an archive video from 2015 featuring his ex-girlfriend Judy. Also on April 28th, it was announced that Ozzy Osbourne, Josh's idol, had COVID. Later on that day, Josh broke his cycle of posting joke videos and uploaded a two-hour vocal cover video dedicated to Ozzy called Get Well, Ozzy Osbourne. Refreshing. <laughs> anyway, so I'll catch you later. To wrap up April, Josh's content output suffered due to not being able to live stream or use his phone. Josh uploaded a total of 115 videos, 51 of which were joke videos. It is also uncertain whether Josh paid the $770 lease renewal that he had brought up on the 25th. Josh seemed unfazed about the bill after splurging his money on DoorDash orders from Buffalo Wild Wings on the 29th and Subway the next day on March 30th. Either the lease renewal was paid by other means, or Josh was relaxing because he still had two more months to come up with the money. On May 1st, Josh annoyed his fans by stating on Facebook that he wouldn't be making the videos he promised until he received the payment from Patreon of almost $200. The next day on May 2nd, Josh uploaded a video to his Patreon after he was paid. Josh's fans on the King Cobra JFS subreddit became bored with Josh's slow content output and photoshopped numerous pictures of Josh with a giant head. On May 3rd, Josh's ex-girlfriend Stephanie posted a video on her channel with her new boyfriend Donnie. Stephanie's boyfriend Donnie then ended up joining the King Cobra JFS subreddit where he was very likeable, responding to questions and joined in on the discussion. Josh didn't post anything all day besides a picture of himself holding up a big sandwich on Facebook. Sometime this day, Josh was also featured in an article on cheeseburger.com entitled Funniest Memes About Dating App Fails. The image that was used was a dating profile created by one of Josh's trolls. On May 4th, HamPow93 made a new video discussing his thoughts about how Josh was progressing with his life. So a lot of fans are asking me, what's my intake on Josh, the Gothic King Cobra, now? He's gotten worse. A lot worse. He needs to eat some humble pie. I'm not telling him what to do because I know he's probably going to see this video and be like, oh, HamPow, here we go again. It's just been depressing to see how he's just drinking his life away and blaming that I mean he continues with the autism wall continues with the Asperger wall I mean he thinks that's a bumper that ooh stop pick on me stop picking on me no one nobody gives a shit it's just watching his life just fade away all the dreams like his talks about his dream house if you want a, a dream mansion not sitting on government funds is going to get it get you closer. He got to work for it, you know. In a rant video that was uploaded on May 5th but recorded on the 4th, Josh briefly mentioned Stephanie and deleted the video. Post that. Some things that I said that pissed off my other half was when I cheated. Never again will I do that, and I haven't since then, but it ruined the good things. So take my advice and don't cheat. A thing that pissed me off? Well, I'm sitting there cuddled up on the couch playing Grand Theft Auto V and my girlfriend just looks at me. She starts getting all pouty like, and she's like, do you still think I'm pretty? She literally said this, do you still think I'm pretty? 
And I'm like, I looked at her like, so I paused the fucking video game and I fucked her on the futon I was playing the video game on. I'm like, what do you think? I started making out with her, playing with her tits, running my hands up and down her curvy waist. I gave her ass a little playful smack. And I fucking ate her pussy out. And then I, then I titty fucked her. And then I fucked her in the pussy. And she sucked my cock. And then we cuddled on the couch. And it was like, if I didn't think you were still pretty, would I be fucking you right now? Like, seriously. On May 5th, Josh created a new shirt for his customized girl storefront. Later on, Josh went back onto Mystic's livestream for a few hours and was completely sober and flashed his green cock holster. That was so unique and so good. You know what I like is that you can Thank manage you. yourself. Cobra, so Stephanie is your old girlfriend? Yeah, that's the name of my ex girlfriend, but I highly doubt it's her on. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that crack. Oh, it's dead. Sadly for Mystic, her YouTube account was terminated after Josh showed his penis. Mystic would end up creating a brand new YouTube channel and blame President Joe Biden for the termination of her channel. Alright guys, it's going live May 6th, 2022. Just documenting the takedown of my channels and you guys seen the infiltration the last three weeks on my channels. The infiltration of JTRIG, J-A-T-R-I-G. The agents coming out of England. And uh, Biden has shied in, in the cronies. On May 6th, Josh attempted to go live on Facebook, but failed. The same day, Gothi had a YouTube account terminated due to nudity or sexual content, similar to Mystic. Due to Josh's content output being very underwhelming, the King Cobra JFS subreddit began making posts about Josh passing away in effort to get a reaction out of him for their own sick entertainment. On May 7th, Josh created even more merch for his customized girl storefront and spammed his Facebook timeline with links to his merch and tactical soap. On May 9th, Josh posted even more merch on his customized girl storefront and spammed the links on his Facebook timeline yet again. Later on, Josh failed the challenge yet again after trying to do a shot of squid fish sauce and hot sauce together. Swallowed it. Oh, that is Raj. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's straight wrong, dude. Mm. That shit made my fucking saliva, dude, go nuts. My salivary glands. Dude, the Atheresco hot sauce is no joke. Ah. Uh. On May 10th, in light of the potential abortion ban in the United States, Josh created a women's liberation t-shirt for his customized girl's storefront and even made a short rant video about his firm stance on being pro-choice. For the next few days, Josh wouldn't post any content besides 23 joke videos in a row. On May 15th, Josh joined Cool Taste's morning livestream called Wake and Bake. Some people in the chat trolled Josh and then he got annoyed at Cool Taste for answering a question honestly about Josh getting laid. Can I put Cobra in timeout? Why? He's stinking up the chat. Well, no. Do you think Cobra would be roofied and ridden like you were by a fan girl? Or is that an unobtainable dream for him? I think that's an unobtainable dream for him. You hear that, Cobra? Not even drugs could help you to get laid in soul. Would you be willing to share your wisdom and secret ways of seduction with Cobra? His dick is going to fall off in his casket before he gets an average intelligence female to give it any attention when left to his own tactics. Interesting. Is he not all girls like an, al like an, al like an alcoholic? Cobra is talking shit about you in chat. Saying he gets more fangirls than you. 
Too bad his wig has been dry for years. Peter's gonna hate. Let him hate. What's your advice to Cobra for helping to find chicks? He needs the help. Well, you know, Cobra, download Tinder. That's all I can say. I think he would have better luck on Grinder. Right? Mm. A few hours later, Josh made a video insulting Cool Taste and called him a fake friend. So, I tuned into Cool Stream's stream earlier, and, and uh, my trolls are going in there and talking mad shit about me, or getting Cool Taste to talk mad shit about me, and then one of the uh, fans said, Do you think Cobra will ever meet the of age fangirl of his dreams? And Cool Taste was like, No, probably not. Because girls don't like spike collars. I'm like, this motherfucker is so dumb, dude. The, the only reason Cool Taste gets chicks is because he's been known to associate with me and Homeboy Scotty. And because he has MS and he's blind. You know, and he wanted more subscribers for his channel. I felt kind of bad for him being a new YouTuber. So I said, okay, yeah. I gave his channel a shout out. Now he's just sitting there talking shit on me. Like, what? Whatever, dude. And then you got people who are calling themselves Crackhead Mike calling me a fucking alcoholic. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking hilarious. But no, dude, it just shows you the kind of person Cool Taste is. People chasing me for clout on the internet. And then they just sit there and stab you in the back and talk shit. But after this, I'm like, okay, this is how Cool Taste repays his thanks. Nice, dude. Real nice. And if he would respond to that question by saying, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Instead of being a complete dickweed and saying, oh, he'll never find someone. And it's like, okay, first of all, cool taste. Not that it matters, but who has more subscribers? They started talking shit on me on the channel, and I'm like, that's cool, man. I'm unsubscribing, and I'm liking the video. I don't have time for this drama. I don't need it in my life. Goodbye. The next day on May 16th, cool taste then made a community post calling out Josh and saying that he gets more girls than him. He also made a short video asking for Josh to contact him. Hey Cobra, when you see this drawer, please get a hold of me. I uh, want to clear some shit up with your last video where you mentioned me. I want to clear, I want to clear the air some of the. A few days later, on May 18th, Josh ended up making an apology video to Cool Taste for calling him a fake friend. He also put Cool Taste's mental well-being into question. Good morning, YouTube. I would like to apologize to Cool Taste. Um, what I said was pretty mean. Honestly, I forgive him. Sometimes he doesn't pay attention when he's answering questions. But uh, yeah, I don't want beef or drama, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe back to Cool Taste. That's my way of saying sorry, I guess. And like, from now on, I'm not gonna take anything he says too seriously, because, you know. Like, it's stupid, it's the internet, and it's it's Cool Taste, dude, like. Cool Taste attempted to continue the feud by live streaming that very same day. See, and this whole problem between you and I, it all started because of you. You say I misinterpret questions. No, you misinterpreted my answer. You do, like, shit talkers. So to the comment, what's going on in Casper? This is what's going on in Casper. Cover rattled the cage with a big dog Collapsed and the dog messages, don't play. 3 .3 PM. Gary, put on the crown and jewels of the true king of Casper. We are within walking distance of each other, dog. Get a hold of me and tell me, yo, let's meet up at the YMCA and collaborate there. Later that same day, Josh made another video apologizing to Cool Taste and said that Cool Taste has a habit of rambling and forgetting what he's talking about. I will admit that what I said to Cool Taste in the the People Are Fake video, I wasn't talking about you smoking weed, dude. I was talking about you asking me for a shout out off camera, and then uh, then you know what I'm saying. Let me ask you this, Cool Taste. I think you're the one that misinterpreted what I said, and I really don't care, honestly, because when you start a video and you go off on this ramble, and then you stop halfway through and go, you forget what the fuck you were saying. Most folks ain't gonna take you seriously, bud. Not trying to be a dick. Cheers to you, like I said in the apology video. It's cool taste. It's the internet who gives a shit what people say. It's just, you know what I'm saying? On May 16th, Josh posted more merch onto his customized girl storefront. This time, he included a custom dog bandana. 
On May 17th, Josh uploaded six new t-shirts to his customised girl storefront, all using copyrighted images. The next day on May 18th, Josh uploaded a new shirt to his customised girl storefront and said that he was going to be taking a break from making new merchandise. Later on, Josh posted a picture of him holding a big super sub from Albertsons. On May 19th, Josh broke his promise of calling down on merch and posted a ridiculous contradicting Facebook post about a gay pride shirt he had just made for a customised girl. Around this time, Josh appeared on a female YouTuber named Crystal Roberts' panel livestream. This relationship was established as Crystal and Goffy were friends and would often appear on each other's panel streams. It could be argued that Josh really missed being able to go live due to how little effort it took. On May 19th, Josh once again reiterated that he missed not being able to go live and said that he cannot go live due to him having a two-factor authentication on his YouTube channel. He's not scared to go live, he can't go live right now. Yeah, I got no phone, and I'm, I'm working on getting a new phone, one of my fans is saying. And you need the phone, just to clarify, because people are not understanding this, you need the phone in order to do the two-step authentication, right? Yes, I do. Do you miss going live? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do miss going live. So do you miss, do you kind of miss the chat? Yes, I do, my fans, yes. I do miss hanging out with my fans in chat. Try to do a cheap ball for camera, so I won't ask for one. Oh, there we go. Some of Josh's fans speculated that Josh was being told not to go live by an outside party. This conspiracy theory was completely false. When Josh would appear on other people's live streams, he would more than often take over and talk about topics that he wanted to talk about. Appearing on these live streams, however, came at a cost. Not only did Josh open himself up to direct trolling due to him not having control of the stream, as we saw from Mystic's livestream a few days ago, but Josh would constantly speak his mind and comfortably use homophobic slurs to insult his trolls, a stark contradiction to his alleged support for the LGBT plus community. Josh's progressive and inclusive ideology was once again put into question after appearing on Crystal's livestream on May 20th, after giving his thoughts and true feelings of his ex-girlfriend Stephanie dating an African-American male. Button. Josh, how do you feel about Donovan fucking I Stephanie? I honestly don't care if Stephanie wants to try to grab progressive points with dating a black dude when the dude's got muscles that are weaker than mine. The dude's mm -hmm. got no fucking arms. But did you see uh, G Fuel liked his, uh, his post on Instagram? I really don't care. It's not a competition. We're all here to exist on the same miserable planet. Because I think she said he was bigger than you, too. Dating a YouTuber shows that I still have some impact on her. Otherwise, she'd be like, I'm done with YouTube. But if she wasn't chasing clout, and if she wasn't trying to date somebody who had some sort of connection in, with YouTube, she wouldn't be sitting here trying to fucking date a YouTuber. And I'm like, I've seen his videos. And I'm like, it's crap. It's all fucking genetic bullshit. This is why I, mean, I don't like my videos because I don't fucking add some cheesy bullshit edit. The real things, the real mm. deal. I mean, he puts in more effort than, you know, like yourself, you know, because you've just been making joke videos. Here's the way I see it. Okay, the more time you spend editing, that's less time you have for fans to give you to give them videos. This is why fans like my videos. I'm not going to spend hours editing it. What you get is what you get. And that's why the fans like me. I'm not some fake persona. And look at Stephanie trying to be all progressive, like, oh, hey, you know, she's been a black person now. So she, that just sounds like an excuse, to be honest, Cobra. Because you can put in more effort. Like the fact that he's a YouTuber shows she's still crushing on me. And then the fact that she's dating a black person, no offense, it's just showing that she's trying to get progressive points. Like, look at me. I'm woke and I'm a part of it kind of thing. And honestly, I don't care. As long as they're happy for each other, that's all that matters, dude. But I'm not afraid to tell it like it is and see it for what it is. But I was the one the first tap it, so I'm not jealous of Stephanie, especially when I got of age fan girls who are like, I'm out of state. I totally fuck you if I live closer. And that's yeah. enough, dude. You know? 
What's up, Cobra? So these dudes be making all kinds of money off your videos, huh? Yeah, yeah. I don't care. They're unoriginal hacks. If I stop going well, on or do making videos <laughs> for a couple of weeks, they lose money. I think they hijacked Sean, though. The trolls got him. I don't trust me. The trolls are fucking retarded. They wish they had Sean. They're fucking losing. I think that troll does have him, though. No, he doesn't trust me. He, she, them, whatever. Trust me. No, they don't. Did he try to assume my gender? That's kind of fucked. What? <laughs> Sean is having a flashlight installed. No, he's not. She, he, them, whatever. <laughs> Sean, he, you fucking nasty faggots. Is Cobra being so toxic and homophobic? If y'all were going through the same shit I was going through, it'd be a different story, right? Like, fuck the haters, dude. The next day on May 21st, a troll pretended to be Stephanie's boyfriend Donovan and confronted Josh about his controversial remarks that garnered attention on the King Cobra JFS subreddit. Well, I just want to know why he's still mentioning Stephanie. Of course he won't talk. I don't know what he's talking about, dude. I never talk about you or Stephanie's new boyfriend if she has one. I honestly don't give a shit. Oh, so you don't remember yesterday? That never happened yesterday. I don't know what the oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, because the, the clips are, are fake, for sure. Gosh, you were just you just said that uh, Steph was dating uh, this dude for the clout. Uh, what? What? You said that he she was dating this dude uh, since he was bla she, he's black. He's like uh, he's given Steph like the clout. Yeah, for like brownie That's points. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah you did. I got a right flashlight and my gun to fucking go. I said I have a lasting impact on her because she's, she's still dating YouTubers, dude. Nah, yeah, that fucking sucks. She's over you. She doesn't like. I'm over her she Doesn't too, care dude. about you. And how do we know you're really her boyfriend? Because you won't even show your fucking face, dude. That's what You've I'm seen saying. my face on TikTok many of times. You've been running <laughs> around my question. We've seen the clips on Reddit. You're obviously still obsessed with Stephanie. Uh, no, I'm not, dude. I got <laughs> a list of fucking fangirls for days, dude. Uh, yeah, do not fucking care. People are more obsessed. Uh, and I am having to do this goddamn shit every day. Also during this stream, Josh and Gothy finally squashed their beef. You two kind of have like some, you guys want to clear the air or, you know, like. Well, I don't have any, any ill intent towards Gothy. I got no problems with her. No, I don't either. Well, there it is there, folks. Yeah, I know, but like, but well, I just wanted to give you, because when I, I knew that Josh would probably be stopping by because he had has been for the past couple of nights and stuff so but i remember you and i talked before we had our big falling out piece and you had said that you did want to apologize to cobes that you were thinking about it but he was not returning any of your uh attempts to contact him so Are we my phone's broke yeah this oh, i is know that now before i think this was i think this is before that before your phone broke okay so okay. That same night, Josh posted a video called Leave My Ex-Girlfriend Alone in an attempt to control the narrative that he was not racist. Y'all need to leave my ex-girlfriend Stephanie the fuck alone. If she got a new boyfriend, cool. Happy for her, man. We're, we're over each other. Like, it's stupid and, and immature what these people are doing. People are accusing me of talking shit about her. I'm like, not really. Well, someone sent me the video of her and her new boyfriend. I'm like, cool. Good for her. I laugh because she's going after a YouTube influencer. I'm just like, the uh, the effect hasn't rubbed off, I see. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck the trolls. I honestly don't care. I'm, you know, I care enough to say, hey, you know what? Leave her the fuck alone, dude. A little later on, Alex Warlord Campbell appeared on Courtney's stream with Josh. Alex said that he'd just gotten out of hospital, he'd broken up with his fiance, and confirmed he was once again living out on the streets. Courtney also confirmed that she'd just sent Josh a phone which he could use to come back to live streaming. Give her on the fucking camera. I'm in the hospital. You told me about this today. This is the first time hearing about it. Him being in the hospital and shit. I got out of the hospital three years ago. Warlord, are you single now, dude? Yes. What happened? You were getting married. Uh, he basically turned out to be a lying piece of shit, and he's actually in a relationship with a woman. Where do you live, Alex? <laughs> Wherever I lay my head at night's home. Ass is up, dude. Now, see, Mr. Museum, I'm going to formally apologize to you for what my ex-boyfriend didn't do that I asked him to do. Okay, what's that? Take pictures of me the way I told you 
That's where you send them. And <laughs> mm. I no part in this. I have no fucking part in this, man. Oh, when I had my rest. No, box, if you I want to get kinky time. like that, do it on your own time, man. No That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, Richie, crush. I can't. <laughs> On May 23rd, Josh posted on the Facebook page of the delivery service Windy City Delivery, based in Casper, Wyoming. Josh gave an older woman with pink hair named Missy a five-star review. With this Facebook post, Josh confirmed which delivery service he was using to order alcohol. On May 24th, Josh created three new t-shirts for his customised girl storefront. On May 26th, Reddit user Bathomet Sewerat captured a photo of Josh and Casper near the bar he's banned from named CY Bar. Josh was banned from the CY Bar in July 2020 after a back and forth argument with a bartender who cut Josh off and felt he had enough to drink. Later that same day, Josh effectively used Facebook to promote his Patreon. The beer review turned out to be a standard two minute drink review he normally does on his channel. On May 27th, Josh appeared in a video by a YouTuber named Fluffy Talks. Fluffy has 1.4 million subscribers and even used a picture of Josh in the video's thumbnail. You'll be cutting my pinky off. Shit. Uh, I'm not sure what app this is, uh, but this guy said, just scoping out the scene to see what's up. What scene are you scoping out with your ancient flip phone and your devil teeth and your devil eyes and your devil hairline. The vampire scene, is that the scene you're scoping out? This is not the best way to scope out a scene. If you're just trying to introduce yourself to some sort of community, unless it's like a freaky vampire community, I don't think that you're gonna make a good first impression with this picture. You're probably gonna scare people. I pooped a little. The picture used in the fake dating profile was from June 29th, 2012 from his Facebook. Just when you thought Josh's content during this month couldn't get any worse, on May 28th, Josh began doing shout out videos for anyone that donated money to his PayPal. These videos were usually under 30 seconds long. Trolls slash fans began donating small amounts of money, which prompted Josh to upload more short shout out videos. That same day, Josh responded to a fan that posted on his Facebook page, asking him when he would be going live again. Josh said that he didn't know and wish he had some beer and told the fan to buy a shirt. This of course birthed a brand new meme that the King Cobra JFS subreddit would use to make fun of Josh's not so subtle e-begging for beer money. Later on, Cool Taste attempted again to get Josh's attention and antagonised him by going live twice. On May 30th, like a teenage girl, Josh made a fan art of his two idols, Ozzy Osbourne and Danny Filth. He also made this fan art the cover photo of his Facebook something that he hadn't changed since 2018. Afterwards, Josh created two new t-shirts for his customised girl storefront in preparation for Memorial Day. Later that afternoon, Josh appeared on Crystal's panel livestream yet again, beef with Cool Taste and danced for some of-age fangirls. I'm like, why the fuck is Cool Taste talking shit on me? Right? Bro, and you want me to collab with you? This is the kind of shit that doesn't, that just makes me want to not collab with you, dude. If he went to do that to me, he go to jail for beating up on the disabled and handicapped. If I was to beat up on him, so, I'd go to jail for beating up on the disabled and handicapped. I'm not gonna fucking beat up cool taste unless you start swinging. So I feel if we were to beat each other up, let's take it to a ring. Did have the energy to put out on him? It wouldn't take long because he's drunk. You'll probably show up drunk. Oh, I wouldn't show up drunk. Wait, I'm not worried. Show up sober, kick your ass, and then fucking drink. Cool taste, come Gosh, you're not doing shit. Cool taste will fucking stomp you out, idiot. No, he wouldn't. He'll the only idiot in you, you fucking. You grease wizard, he'd smack the shit out of you. I like to see him fucking try, dude, because we I don't even. Okay, who is that? I don't give a fuck if he's disabled. If he fucking tries to hit me, I will fucking kick his ass. What do I gotta do to prove that? That I'm uh I'm the superior here. Like y'all are fucking retarded. That and you Josh, coming up, you don't have that, to fucking prove, prove anything to point. anybody. That fucking troll coming on here just proved my point and I'm fucking right. And if Cool Chase tried to fucking kick my ass, I would fucking lay him the fuck out, dude. I don't give a fuck. Try me, motherfucker. See what fucking happens. This scrawny motherfucker with the MS, I'm not gonna fight Cool Taste because that's too fucking easy, dude. It's too fucking easy. One, he's blind. 
And two, he's got MS. And three, he's a scrawny little fucking weakling. That's not a fair fight for him. Yo, Josh, cool taste would slap the grease off you and make your hairline recede right, more dude. than it already is. Yeah, you, you're real fucking tough. You won't even show your fucking face on camera, pussy. Yo, I'll gladly show my face, you retard. It's yeah, Noel bro. Slideshows. You know who Noel Slideshows is. You ain't shit. You're fucking not awesome. make it I would slap no. you so hard the facial hair would come off your head, I, I, Josh. Justin, you fucking hear it. You're 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 fucking they're Brahmas. They're steel toes. Yeah, the Brahmas. Brahma the steel Brahmas. toes. I get them from Walmart. They're everything crazy. Oh, yeah, my dude. <laughs> uh, TWU, can you hold up two fingers for me, please? Thank you. <laughs> nice. What size shoe do you wear? That's what's up. You're a third Cobes, size third Cobes, let me see that dick. Those feet look oh, like they're on now. Let me see that dick, bro. Rebel Revolution didn't really feel like, I didn't feel like it had a real clear, like, idea of what it the... Later that night, Josh finally went live on YouTube and made his fans suffer by doing a Sydney Watson video response. Teenage girls, it, it gets better, I think. Now, something I found really interesting here is that... To wrap up the month of May, Josh uploaded a total of 124 times, 90 of which were joke videos. Josh also wore the same t-shirt for 19 days in a row without washing it. On June 2nd, Josh created a new shirt for his customized girl storefront. On June 3rd, Josh rekindled his friendship with Cool Taste after he came over to Josh's apartment with the cheapest liquor he could find. Their collaboration, however, was interrupted by warlord Alex Campbell. Alex was seemingly high on drugs and would not sit still. You want a beer? Yeah. You don't want a beer? That's cool. I do. You do? Alright. I'll sit there next to you. It's our real. Oh, you got it. Okay. Sweet. Cheers. Cheers. So, yeah, Cold Taste is coming over, just hanging out, having a couple beers. Uh, squashing like th there's no beef, dude. The only beef is in the kitchen. Is this the Mr. Cool Taste I've heard about? Yeah, yeah like he that. came and apologized. He brought beer. So good, sir. Yeah, appreciate that. Oh, no. oh, I didn't mean to. Sorry, he can't see. All right, well, let's just shake your hand. Nice to meet you. Hey, 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 bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, what? hey, bro. What's the difference? What's the difference? Refrigerator. What's that? One is a part we pull meat out. And you can make that joke because of your sexuality. Yeah. Enough, enough with the jokes. What's going on? What, what's happening? We're just what's chilling, going? dude. Just it. chilling? Just chilling? Dude, just chilling. Like a fuck Ooh. down. Jeez. We're like just sitting here having a beer, man. Goddamn. <laughs> yes. From the words of babes. Later on, Josh and Alex went to the office bar and grill for karaoke night. Karaoke night! The next day, on June 4th, Josh went live and said that he had an incident with Alex at the bar the night prior. So I went to the bar with uh, Campbell and, uh, and I don't know what the deal, Cam what Campbell's deal was yesterday. Because he comes over saying he's got vodka to share with me. Practically drinks the whole thing on stream yesterday. I had beer in the fridge. I didn't mind sharing. It was the weekend. And then when we go to the, the bar to have a drink, dude straight up asked me if he could have a sip of my beer after he just got done drinking the, the two that I bought for him. And I was I'm like, down to here on my glass. I'm like, bro. And then I'd said something. I made a joke about it. And he got offended and started acting all weird. And then he stomped off. And I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. He had, to, I don't know, dude. I don't know what his deal was yesterday. <sighs> Alex came over and just completely took over the stream and would not stop talking. Like, 
And people, I've noticed that when they're on meth and shit, like I'm not accusing Alex of doing it, but when they when they hit the peak of their high, I've seen them. It's just they're de -de 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 -de, you know what I'm saying? Like me right now, you can tell that I don't do it because I smoke weed and drink alcohol. Okay, like Swampy said at King Cobra JFS. My friend committed suicide after trolling you because you told him to. Well, he had two choices, Swampy. Leave King Cobra alone or kill yourself because if you're a miserable fucking troll who gets a lot of joy in trolling somebody with autism, then you might as well do the world a favor. Seriously, if you if my trolls kill themselves, I want you to send it into my into my phone so I can watch you do it. So Swampy, fuck you and fuck your friend. On June 5th, Cool Taste gave me a shout out. Uh, the video that the collaboration cover and I did, I saw the video that Bite Size did, and I gotta say, it was pretty good. It wasn't bad. Shout out to Bite Size. Later on, Josh posted on Facebook that Sean was back from his upgrade from the website throwthings.com. On June 6th, Josh posted five new t-shirts to his customised girl's storefront. One of the shirts that said I'd rather jack off than be a jackass was removed by customised girl. On June 7th, Josh said during a PayPal shoutout video that he'd spent over $100 on tactical soap in preparation for Father's Day. Your boy Cobra just ordered a hundred plus dollars worth of tactical soap. I'm looking forward to getting that. Thank you, Scott Carr, for letting me be an affiliate for your badass soap. On June 8th, Josh posted two new t-shirts to his customized girl storefront. On June 9th, Josh made a short shout-out video and said that he'd be going on vacation with his family on the 4th of July. Many fans speculated that Josh's uncharacteristic decision to attend a family gathering could have been made in response to CobraCon. Now, I will be going on vacation on the 4th of July, but I'll be back. I'll be back. On June 10th, Josh shared pictures with a fan of his booze haul for the weekend. On June 11th, Josh spoke about CobraCon and also got a call from his dad, Clint, on Facebook. People on the subreddit have been bragging about how they're going to come to fucking Casper on the 4th of July. And I'm like, yeah, you're full of shit. Talking about how they're going to bust down my fucking door and all this other fucked up shit. And I'm like, one, I'm not going to be in town. And two, if you do it, you're going to get your asses arrested. And I'm getting text after text that keep saying, oh, hey, you know, we're going to come here on the 4th of July, 4th of July, 4th of July. And they keep saying it. And I'm like, you're dumb. You are fucking dumb. I, if I haven't already filed a report with the police, it's going to be filed any day now. So the Casper Police Department, one, they know who I am, and two, they know that my trolls are the biggest cunts. And three, it's like, yeah. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Just hanging out. What are you doing? Well, you weren't answering your phone. I couldn't understand your message. No, you're good. I'm on a YouTube live video right now. I see. Well, we need to talk about a couple things that are important, so... All right, I'll get back to you after I get done making my video. Yeah, try to be quick because it's important. All right. All right, love you, bud. All right, love you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, all right, I'll be right back. After the call with his dad, Josh returned to stream again and said that he did nothing wrong and blamed the trolls for the sudden call with his father. Thank you for the concerns. Uh, I didn't do a fucking thing, y'all. All I'm going to say was it was my trolls and we're going to leave it at that. God, these people are some sad, miserable fucks. You know what's the sad truth of it? My trolls are more addicted to me than I am to alcohol. And it's miserable. I feel sorry for my trolls. What are you drinking on? Sake. Oh. I'm an anime nerd, so of course I'm going to drink sake. You want to try a shot of it? Oh, no. Yeah, dude. I got plenty of alcohol, so yeah, I did on my show. Later on, Josh went live again, got drunk, and said that he'd received over three hundred dollars in donations from his fans. I want to thank all the fans. 
who have donated their time and their money to have an awesome weekend with King Cobra. Even if I didn't make $300 over the weekend, I still appreciate your support. You're tuning into the videos. It's telling the trolls to go fuck themselves. You can't handle how badass King Cobra JFS is. On June 12th, Josh posted a link to a GoFundMe for his friend's dog and attempted to help raise $10,000 for cancer treatment. A few weeks later, the goal was reduced to $2,000, but sadly, the money was not raised. That same day, Josh went live and a man turned up to his apartment and knocked on his door. It turned out that a troll had made a fake dating profile for Josh, most likely Grinder. The troll waited until Josh went live on YouTube before inviting the man over to Josh's apartment. Videos. One second. What's up? Uh... Yeah, I own my fucking YouTube trolls. Ah, I suck Cobra's cock a little harder, why don't you? God, my trolls are the saddest fucks on the planet. I don't know who the fuck this person is or why the fuck they're showing up to my door. It's their criminal buddies that they finance by proxy. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <sighs> I don't even know who the fuck this guy is, dude. Like, why the fuck is he showing up to my fucking door? All these people who are fucking with me behind the scenes just to get a reaction. Good job. You have no life. Like, I'm straight for of age women. So I'm pretty sure I already know what the fuck the trolls did to have some dude show up to my apartment. Either a fake ad on Craigslist or a fake dating ad, ad on some stupid bullshit dating website. And it's just like, people have no fucking life, dude. Cobra rules the trolls' lives. Otherwise, you wouldn't try so hard to fuck with me. You wouldn't try so hard to get a reaction. You would simply would not care what the fuck Cobra does with his life. Over the next few days on the King Cobra JFS subreddit, fans began jokingly making plans to visit Casper on the 4th of July to further Josh's paranoia. On June 16th, Josh made a parody of the song WAP by Cardi B called WAF, Wet Ass Farts. I did a parody, parody song, you know the song WAP, Wet Ass Pussy by Cardi B? The snakes in that music video and the fucking costumes the singers were wearing. Yes. She's looking fine in that music video, so was her uh, partner in crime. That being said, this is just a parody. This is not meant to... It's just, it's funny. <sighs> On June 17th, Noel got his wand from Josh. King Cobra, I uh, really, really thank you very much for this lovely wand. And uh, this wand... Rockstar, and uh, and I want to say thank you for the soap. I took a shower with the soap already. It was really smelled good. Smells good. Later on, Josh did an almost four-hour vocal cover stream and made an insensitive joke about HIV and deleted the live stream after, feeling that the joke was made in poor taste. I mean, I could tell the joke, but y'all would hate me for it. This is no offense to gay people. This is, like I said, this joke's really bad. I'm not going to listen to anyone or anything. It doesn't matter whether I tell the joke or not. People are still going to hate me. There are a bunch of fucking assholes going, you better not tell that joke, boy. And it's like, you ain't from the fucking South. You ain't some fucking pissed off fat fucking cop sitting out a hot fucking Southern Georgia day going, my lord, it ain't that hot outside. Better tell if I need to hear it. Oh my fucking god. You don't tell me shit, fuckers. I was just gonna say, did you hear about the gay parody band of Ham? They called themselves HIV instead of HIM. I can't believe I just said that. Holy shit, fucking Cobra. After the deleted stream, Josh went live again and apologized for the joke and went on a tangent about bullying a kid named Carl in high school 
and thought that comedian Dave Chappelle was homosexual. I got a fucked up sense of humor and I totally support gays and LGBTQ rights. That's the only reason I deleted my last live stream, to be brutally honest. No, it's just like when I got bullied in high school by that one fucking annoying asshole. I'm not going to say his fucking name, but he called shoes smileys and he was so fucking annoying. The only reason he fucking bugged the fuck out of me is because I had a dad who actually gave a shit and his dad bullied him. So he acted out in school to make up for it. I don't feel the least bit sorry for him, to be honest. That being said, look at Dave Chappelle. Like I said, the dude straight up came out as gay on an award show, sitting there smoking a cigarette, you know. And freaking, he, he tells Daphne's story and he gets cancelled for it. On June 18th, Josh created a Cash App account named King Cobra 666 420 Later on that same day, Josh debuted a new hat from a fan. So thank you to the fans who sent me the, the new hats. Like They're pretty more. snazzy. This one actually fits my head very comfortably. Later on that same day, popular live streamer and internet lolcow Wings of Redemption reacted to my edit of Josh's cooking video, Creeping Reaper Chimichanga Bacon Cheeseburger. Like he literally has two dollar store fucking chimichangas, and I'm using chimichangas in the in in the in the loosest form possible. This this is basically discount meat wrapped in a tortilla that was frozen five seconds ago with a piece of American cheese over top of it and two sad-ass fucking microwaved Texas toast bread. On June 20th, Josh door dashed his dad Clint Red Lobster for Father's Day and also tried to give him tactical soap, but Clint declined. All these fucking ass wipes are like, Cobra, you didn't do a happy Father's Day stream with a beer. Your father's so disappointed in you. And I told him to fuck off. To be quite honest, fuck off. Not only did I buy my dad Red Lobster for Father's Day, but I also got two bars of tactical soap to give to him, which he does not need at the moment because he already has a couple bars. On June 22nd, the trolls sent another grinder date to Josh's apartment and they knocked on his door. Seeking help, changing things. That's the step. And hey, if you oh, change. Fucking... <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know what you want to do. Okay, so here's, what, here's the scoop. My trolls have set up a uh, dating profile and they've been sending people I'm not into into my, into my door and shit. That's uh, cyber stalking and harassment and sexual harassment. And uh, I'm not going to get mad about it because it just shows you my trolls are fucking gay. Yep. Yep. Piece of shit. And you don't see me tracking down the personal identities of my fucking trolls and setting up fake dating profiles in their fucking name and then doxing their address on top of the dating profile having like random gay dudes show up to their house because to me that's being way too invested into my haters. I would rather invest my time in being a good person getting better at guitar, and changing the world. While these miserable fucks sit there in their mom's basement laughing their ass off. But that's all you guys have. You know, these trolls. So, so like, Cobra didn't even get mad. I just laughed at him. Like, wow, dude. My trolls are more immature than I am. Holy shit. It's like, I don't need my trolls help to get laid. You know what I'm saying? I'm King Cobra JFS. Everybody in this goddamn town knows who the fuck I am. I walk into a fucking bar and I got chicks checking me out, dude. <laughs> The next day on June 23rd, another grinder date was sent to Josh's apartment, but he brushed it off. I'm a victim and I'm tired of being harassed and I want to go to a woman's prison. They got there and stopped their hormones. That was the first sign. Okay. Now, obviously, this is not isolated. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know who the fuck Mark is. That's my ex. Oh, I'm like, no, dude, I don't fucking know. Who the fuck? I'm straight for average women, so what the fuck's his deal? <laughs> and if I made that joke, I'd be called a fucking homophobe classic, dude. I love it. I can. Uh-huh. 
Josh went live again the same day and discovered that Trolls was sending PayPal donations but kept the money on hold by choosing the option Goods and Services instead of Friends and Family when sending Josh the money on PayPal. Well, thank you, Don, for the money, even though it's on hold. They found a way to fucking try to fuck with me, but it's just like, I don't care. Like, oh, hey, Cobra's got $104.14 on hold because of this PayPal feature where you can put the money on hold. And then, yeah, it's just another dumb way to try to troll Cobra, and it failed miserably. Like, oh, hey, I want to try to give Cobra money and then, like, take it back as soon as he tries to get it. She goes to run for the... Billy Elijah is almost old enough to drink. Ooh. Ooh, woo. I'm definitely going to get fucking plastered on Billy Elijah's 21st birthday. I'll right there with her, you know. And I'm like, wait, she's big into soda pop and her favorite color is green. I'm like, it's my kind of chick, dude. Hell yeah. Josh went live one final time and another grinder date knocked on Josh's door. Josh answered the door shirtless and yelled that he was not homosexual. They both celebrate. Oh fucking god, I'm so done with this shit, YouTube. Can I help you? I didn't text you, dude. No, I'm not gay, I'm straight. That's my fucking internet troll. I'm sorry to waste your time. Oh, dude. That just makes my fucking trolls gay because they're fantasizing about it. Sincerely, you want a fucking reaction? You want me to get mad? I'm sitting here laughing at my trolls. Dude, that's more funny than watching this chick get her heart stomped on, to be honest. Let me ask you this. How would it feel if a bunch of people that hated your guts signed you up for some shit you're not into, and then this was happening? You wouldn't like it. And it's going to catch up to my fucking trolls. You just wait and see, man. I ain't going to have to do shit. My fans are going to take care of it. On June 25th, Josh made three new shirts for his customized girl storefront. Later on, Josh got $90 in donations on Cash App and bought Wendy's. Josh recalled getting fired from Wendy's and claimed that he got fired from his second job as a dishwasher at the office bar and grill. This was completely false. Josh quit his dishwashing job as the head chef had cut his hours down to a few hours a week. You know what I mean? Like, I got fired from Wendy's because I made a video. And the video was basically me just being like, hey, look, I had a customer that was super rude to me. This is how I handled it. I handled it professionally. I advise you do the same. And then I got a job at a sweet gig dishwashing dishes. The owners of that establishment are good people. But, yeah, we're not going to get into that either because the trolls got me fired from that shit, too. I was just like, you know what, fuck this. And I started making wands for Cobra Craft. I've been doing that for the last four years. So, I want to get this out of the way before I continue the video. And I put my two-week notice in at my dishwashing gig. And the reason why I did that is because they're not giving me enough hours. It's not the owners of the, of the place's fault more or less, but I just, you know, that's all I'm saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I found better opportunity with my wands. Later that afternoon, Josh posted two funny pictures of himself on Facebook. Later that night, Josh announced that he was working on a new comedy related album called King Cobra's Funny Songs. Josh, however, would change the album name to King Cobra's Comedy Album a few days later. So I'm calling my new album uh, King Cobra's Comedy Album instead. I think it's got a much nicer ring to it. Uh, I included two parody songs, one song I made with Siri, plus a, a skit I did making fun of a certain... The fifth song or skit is going to be just me doing stand-up comedy for like an hour straight, so I've already got like 31 minutes of it recorded. I'm just kind of going through and... You know, telling jokes and just leaving that as a recording, but uh, yeah. On June 28th, Josh went live and made a three hour long Terrence pop video response and another grinder date showed at his apartment again. Let's sign him up for a fake blah 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 profile and on the internet and have a bunch of them show up. 
which for the Casper police who watch my videos, that's evidence right there that uh, some uh, really illegal shit's going down as far as internet stalking and all that other shit, you know. And it's going to come back and bite him in the ass. Let's go see who it is real quick. Who is it? I don't know you, dude. Who is it? Go away, dude. You know, my trolls are going to get what's coming to them. I didn't even answer the fucking door. My YouTube trolls are a bunch of pieces of shit. Everyone knows I'm straight, of age women who are alive and cisgendered. And I support LGBTQ plus rights. As long as you don't hit on me, we're good, you know? Josh ended the month by creating two new shirts for his customized girl storefront. With a steady amount of PayPal and Cash App donations coming from fans, Josh shifted back to doing short joke videos. Towards the end of the month, Josh livestreamed less, most likely in an effort to stop grinder dates from showing up at his apartment. 